Grand Isle, Louisiana's last active barrier island. With a population of less than 1,000, it tends not to get much attention unless it's in the face of a storm. And one fishing charter captain thinks people should see the sights before they're gone. I got to believe that I was fortunate enough that I saw some of the heyday of Grand Isle. Daryl Carpenter runs Real Screamers Guide Service. His company gives clients an experience of the aisle while bringing them out to fish and giving them a place to stay. Daryl's worked on the island for two decades and says there's nothing like it. All I got to do is pick up a cast net and walk 50 feet and I'm, I'm catching shrimp. Every fish swimming in that water eat a live shrimp. So, I mean, it's, it's the, like I said, it's the whole package. It's the solitude of it. It's the quietness. And it's the freedom to be able to go do something like that. But it's not all perfect. Daryl had to go through a lot to get to where he is. His problems started right after Hurricane Katrina, when he wanted to reclaim his old land that had washed away. It cost me $15,000, just an engineering cost to satisfy the permit process. Reclaiming land is hard work, but for Daryl, the hardest part was getting started. The Department of Natural Resources gives out coastal use permits, but Daryl says the application for the permit was harder than rebuilding the land itself. I've got to believe that if some of these wetlands regulations and all do not loosen up, then I don't think there's going to be very, more, very many more generations to enjoy this place. Some agencies are trying to rebuild and protect the land so people like Daryl won't lose it so fast and can continue enjoying it. The Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority spent $12.5 million on piles of breakwaters. These stones were placed along the west bank of the island. By the time they put them up, the bank had eroded so far away that what happens is the waves regenerate themselves behind it. These breakwaters were supposed to stop the harsh waves from crashing against the shore. Daryl's land saw the lack of positive effects from these barriers, and to him, the effort was too late and seemed like a waste of money. I'm sure at some point the federal government, the state government, everybody's going to get tired of throwing money at Grand Isle. Private money would rebuild this island. We wouldn't need government money. With his own money and time poured into an application process to get back his land and his current property disappearing, Daryl thought things couldn't get much worse. It looked like everything was rolling good. April of 2017, I'm here in the yard when I get the call from the doctor telling me I got to come back to Baton Rouge because uh, they had found in, a, in a, some lab work I had done, they had found evidence of cancer. The diagnosis was earth shattering and involved months of treatment. His business was about to go under, but his employees kept things running. They kept the doors open. We were able to keep the bills paid, but that was about it. It was his own slice of heaven that helped him get to the other side and had him coming back as soon as he could. It's the challenge. It's being out in nature. It's the challenge of you're chasing a wild animal. So it's the challenge of trying to outsmart that wild animal. Carpenter isn't alone in his love for Grand Isle. His friend Shelly Jambin has been through her own share of troubles, but like Daryl, she says it's all worth it. We're a seven mile long island. We only have to 10 minutes to know if anything's gone missing. It's small town, but it has, you know, has some good people. You'll see them, especially when the storm hits, you'll see them all come together. You'll, you'll see it's remarkable what they can do. For Carpenter, the future generation getting the chance to experience this part of the world is what makes Grand Isle so important. The kids, you know, when you bring the kids out and they're nothing but giggling and laughing and, you know, they're not fighting, they're not pulling each other's hair, that type of stuff, because they can't. They've got a fish on the line. They're doing everything they can to hold on to a rod and reel. That makes it all worthwhile. Carpenter and Jambin agree that while the heyday of Grand Isle may be a thing of the past, the pair is willing to risk it all to live out their golden years here. In Grand Isle, I'm Oscar Tickle.